I'm not saying you lost salvation because you went into sin. We all be in trouble. We go into sin sometimes. We still say, "Remember, I told you this morning, we're justified by what faith and not works." But it's still the Bible says sin brings death. Yeah. It's going to bring death. You'll bring death to your household. It's going to bring death to your situation. If you're dwelling in it, it's going to bring death. Even though you may be miserable, it's going to bring death to your situation. You're going to be angry. You're going to hate the truth. You're not going to hear the truth. And look at him. He said, I hate. If we hate the truth, we'll be deceived. Mm -hmm. Remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 says, God sent them a strong delusion in the end days. Why did he send a strong delusion? It says, because they chose not the love of the truth. They chose not to love the truth, but they received a lie. There's an antichrist system that's going to set up. And even now, we see it in this country, become, coming to this country, where people will accept Islam, which is an antichrist religion, that really will butcher you. I've read the Quran. You read some of that Quran, you'll see that they believe in the surahs to actually kill the infidel. I'm not kidding you. This right. is true. I know people say it's a religion of peace. It's not a religion of peace. No, it it's a religion of peace is. Amen. <laughs> they will cut your phalanges off. They'll take your hands off. And then they'll take your head off. That's in the surahs. I want to say it's surah 9-5. Yeah, 9 yep. yeah. They sure will. That's not a joke. And they believe it. The ones that are over here, like the doctors and lawyers, are saying, no, this is a religion of peace. They come in just like they did in Lebanon, like in 1978. They come in peacefully in a silent jihad. But when the one of the radicals come in, then they have to join them. If they don't join them, then they die just like we do. But I'm not kidding. This stuff is coming in. We've even got it in the White House. Mm -hmm. The Muslim Brotherhood are in positions in the White House running this country. I'm not kidding. I'm serious as a heart attack. This is already here. This is what's setting up right now in front of our faces. We have no idea how long it's going to take for this thing to come into fruition, into to its fullest. But we know that something's going on. <laughs> we see laws being changed, the Constitution being torn down, and many people, your friends, your family members, are going to receive that life. It's going to blow your mind. You're going to say, how in the world can you reject Christianity and desire Islam? Well, have you seen The View lately? Anybody yeah. watch that, John? Uh -uh. Them women on The View, they receive Islam and reject Christianity, and they'll be the first ones to go. Because Islam will hang the homosexuals. They will kill them. Kill them. Well, <laughs> and the ones proclaiming on the view, in the media, some of them are homosexuals. But yet they're rejecting Christianity. Who wants to show love? Who wants to show mercy? Who wants to forgive sin? Who wants to give power to come out? And they're accepted. Why is that? That don't even make sense, does it? You got the grace of Jesus or the wrath of Allah. And they're saying, give us the wrath of Allah. You remember when Jesus was before he's to be crucified? When Pilate, the Roman emperor, not the Roman governor, excuse me, not emperor, stood up and said, Choose you between the two, Jesus or Barabbas. Barabbas was a wild man, he was a killer. But the whole place said, What? Give us Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. Crucify him. Crucify him. You ever seen the passion? Oh, yeah. Barabbas, boy, that dude, he looked pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, trying to give us the type of symbol of what was inside that man. Mm -hmm. And the people wanted who? Does that make sense to you? No. Jesus they wanted to kill her among them at night where they couldn't even lock their stone doors. Don't even get that deal. Uh -huh. <laughs> they didn't have no locks in them days, you know. <laughs> anyway, I mean, this guy can climb in your window and kill you, but give us him. We want the killer, but not the Savior. Mm -hmm. That same spirit of deception is here today. And many people desire the killer instead of the healer. They don't want the healer, they want the killer. And it's going to blow our minds. Just like they're going to hate the truth. And you're going to wonder why, why? And it's going to frustrate you if you keep your eyes on it. But you got to get your eyes on Jesus and say, Lord, I'm going to start praying for these people. For they know not what they do. They really don't. They're deceived. They are deceived. It says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man. I went over that scripture already. Verse 9. The king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Amal, Amal, excuse me, and the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Kenaiah, made him horns of iron, 
and said, Thus said the Lord. Now this guy claims to be speaking for who? The Lord. He said, Thus said the Lord. Now this is a false prophet here. They're going to do that too. With these shall you push the Syrians until you have consumed them. So you can see he's very charismatic. This false prophet, out of 400, he made him a set of horns and got some drama involved. And they're all watching this guy. I guess he's running around like this. That's all I can imagine. He's putting some daggum charismatic stuff into it, some drama into it, and they're going, okay, thus said the Lord, we're going to be able to do this thing. We're going to go out there and whoop them. All right, it's kind of like a football cheerleader or something, you know? Kind of like a football game. Rob, Rob. I ain't doing this. I started to say, kick him in the knee. <laughs> but, and all the prophets prophesied, so saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. Mm -hmm. That's what all the prophets are saying even now. If you turn on TV and you happen to can't find nothing on, and you hit the 70 channel, 70 or most of them do, TV in channel, yeah. oh, you're going to get a hold of a bunch of preachers preaching prosperity. That's it. Oh my goodness. I can't remember that one. Oh, there was a guy. Oh, I can't think of his name now. He called himself a prophet. And he said that when Obama takes office, that we need to come in beside him, the church, and be a Deborah. This Deborah Barack in Judges chapter 4. And since his name is Barack Obama, oh, <laughs> what is this guy's name? He'll come to me in a minute. I know you do, but. Well, I call him out, man. I can't remember his name. I remember that devil when I seen it. <laughs> anyway, he's saying what's going to happen is if the church gets with Barack Obama, yeah. we're going to have houses we didn't build. And he starts going through that feud in Deuteronomy. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to prosper and have everything we want. We're going to be rich and have everything we need. Mm. The church is going to prosper. And many people buy this stuff. 600,000 people voted on it. <laughs> 600,000. No, no women. I think it was... Uh, Actually, either six million or six hundred million of the church. He wouldn't have got in there if it had to been for that amount. Oh, I can't remember if it was six million. I think it was six million. Six million Christians voted for this man. Now, this man hates the Word of God. He quotes it, but he twists it. He quotes the surahs in the Quran too. He's only a glimpse of what's coming after him. He's only a glimpse of this deceit, deceiving spirit I'm talking about tonight. The spirit of deception. There's an Antichrist figure that's going to be a world leader. After Barack helps tear the United States Constitution down, the freedoms down here, then there's a man going to rise up and make peace in the Middle East after it all breaks out. Now, we just heard last night what happened. Israel bombed Syria. This is a big deal, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> When's the last time Israel actually bombed somebody like this? Right. It's nuclear type. I know. I know what that's in. So all hate about to break loose over in the Middle East. You can see it's just like a volcano. Mm -hmm. It's bumping to the top and you go home at night and you see the news and it's talking about, well, over here, it's missile strikes in Israel today. Over and over and over. It's like the Lord out of His mercy has withheld it back and trying to show us something. Know your season. Know your season. Know your season. Watch and pray. Mm -hmm. Do you see what's happening? Can you see the season you're in? Can you see how late the hour is? We see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And yet people still become complacent. So I don't want to go to church. Forget church. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to believe what they tell me. And so what they do is they believe what's coming through the deception on the TV. Yeah. And then they hear what they want to hear. And the whole time, this guy is going to rise up. He's going to make peace. When you've got someone that makes peace in the Middle East, after all this turmoil, people are going to love it. I want you to think about it. You're right. They don't love it. Because if war breaks out, we talked about this before, the gas price is going to go to anywhere between 5 